Modern Radio Theater presents Life with the Crenshaws, brought to you by Red Rock's Butter Flavored Biscuits, biscuits for all occasions and all tastes. Today's episode is Lessons on the Civil Discourse, and now, Life with the Crenshaw. <laughs> Marge and Albert Crenshaw are politically active citizens. They are members of the Democratic Party, and they support many progressive causes, while at the same time trying to understand points of view and perspectives different than theirs. Recently, however, they have become increasingly frustrated with their inability to have reasoned, productive conversations with their more conservative friends and neighbors. Let's listen in. Well, that was a painful experience. What do you mean, Elmer? I thought you were excited to see your old friend Robert. I was. We ordered breakfast, ate several Red Rocks butter-flavored biscuits, drank a lot of coffee. Then our conversation turned to politics. From there, it was all downhill. Anger, accusations, and Robert getting up from the table saying he doesn't know me anymore. Then he left. I'd not seen this guy in months, and he just gets up and leaves me sitting there with the bill to pay. I am so sorry, Elmer. I'm having a similar experience with Florence from our bridge club. Our worldviews are just so different. She tells me how right she is, I tell her how right I am, and wrong she is. And the conversation just spins out of control. It makes me sad, but I am not going to let her run all over me. I'm sorry to hear that, Marge. It just seems that people with differing political views are unable to have a civil conversation today. And I know that I'm part of the problem. Me too. I just wish I knew what to do. Well, Marge, it's been a couple of days now since we talked about the problem of effective political discourse with some of our friends. Have you had any thoughts about what we can do? I have. I think we should make new friends. Seriously, though, I believe that we should learn to be more effective communicators. I think that we should learn the skills of civil discourse, and I know just where we can do that. Where's that? The Elmdale Public Library. I've talked with Mrs. Brenneman, the librarian, and she assures me that she can point us to some resources that will help us. I love that library. The smell that is found nowhere else. The soft light filtering through the high windows. The quiet. Let's do it. Maybe someday I once again will be able to sit down with Robert talk about political issues, and part as friends. And now, folks, a short word from Red Rock's Butter Flavored Biscuits. With the holidays upon us, Red Rock's Butter Flavored Biscuits are perfect for any dinner gathering. In fact, these tasty biscuits are perfect for any meal, any time of year. And did you know that Red Rock's Butter Flavored Biscuits are served daily on the tables of our men and women in uniforms stationed all around the world. Pick some up at your local grocery store today. You and your dinner guests will be glad you did. Red Rocks Butter Flavored Biscuits A treat your mouth will want to meet Happy tummy taste buds too Try them every meal time our biscuits will be just right for you. It's 
been two weeks since the Crenshaws began their research in the civil discourse at the Elmdale Public Library. They both learned a lot, and thanks to Ms. Brenneman, the librarian, Elmer has been asked to make a short presentation to his lodge group, and Marge has been asked to make a presentation to her chapter of the Inner Wheel Club. Let's listen in to hear what they have to say. Now that you know how I got involved in this effort, let me say that civil discourse is engagement in conversation intended to enhance understanding. Others have said it is a more civilized and respectful way of having a disagreement. Civil discourse is both an attitude and a skill. One of the most important principles of civil discourse is having an open mind. When having a discussion with someone with an opposing view to yours, it is important to remember that no one is ever completely right or completely wrong. Another critical element of civil discourse is focusing on the issue and not a person's character. Challenge ideas not the individual with whom you are having a conversation. Avoid labeling. This means I have to learn not to call my neighbor Frank a poor excuse for a human being when we are in a heated political conversation. <laughs> Another important guideline is to express curiosity about the arguments another is making to you. Instead of challenging a person's beliefs, Ask questions. What brought you to your conclusion? Or what evidence have you seen that makes you believe this or that? Trying to find common ground in a discussion is also critical. For example, start with facts that both parties can agree upon. Are there any questions? Yes, Penelope? What if you are interested in engaging in a civil discussion, but the other party is not? That is a great question. And I would say that when someone is not interested in or lacks the skills to engage in civil discourse, you just need to accept it and put your efforts where both parties can feel good about the interaction. Anyone else? No? Well then finally I would add that do not antagonize another by using loaded words or phrases such as, that's just what a closed-minded idiot would say. When possible, paraphrase another's point or arguments such as, so what I hear you saying is, and very important to me, try to remember that disagreements over ideas and personal attacks are very different. Let's now tune in to Elmer and see how he's doing with his Lodge Brothers. Now another point I think is worth mentioning is that in a civil discussion, presenting facts is important. That is to say that arguing with fact instead of opinion is more productive. Also, when someone in the discussion expresses opinions, it is important to label them as opinion and to try to determine the reasons or experiences that form them. Finally, I would add that in a civil discussion, listen without interrupting. Try to control your emotions. Be okay with saying that you don't have an answer or that you don't know something and be mindful of your tone and body language. Does anyone have a question? How about you, my old friend Robert? Is it ever okay to just end a discussion or to walk away from an uncomfortable situation? Absolutely. If you think a conversation has become unproductive or there is nothing else to say, end it. It's not a sign of giving in, just that there is nowhere else to go in the discussion. But I caution 
that you would only walk away after really trying to have a productive conversation. Elmer and Marge are back home after making their presentations and over a hot cup of coffee and a plate of Red Rocks butter flavored biscuits are trying to decide what to do next. Well, Marge, what do you think we've learned about civil discourse? I think we've learned that civil discourse is difficult, takes hard work, and requires practice. I agree. Also, I believe we learned that it is not something that everyone will think is necessary or valuable. But if we can accomplish a civil discussion, all parties should congratulate themselves for seeking better understanding, viewing the perspectives of others, and building back one of the guiding principles of our democracy. And now we need to practice. I have invited your old friend Robert over to finish the discussion you started at the diner, and he's agreed. He's bringing his wife Tootie, and they want the four of us to continue your previous discussion, civilly. Here they are now. I'll put on more coffee. Let's take this opportunity to really have a productive, engaging, and educational conversation. It will require us to work at it, but like many things, I think the benefits far outweigh the costs. The part of Penelope was played by Sharon Barnes. Bill Barnes played the part of my old friend, Robert. Marge Crenshaw was played by Deb Shukar. Elmer Grimshaw was played by Ron Shukar. Join us next week when once again, Red Rock's butter-flavored biscuits will bring life with the Crimshaws. Until then, this is Tom Olkowski saying so long.